Welcome to Three Steps. This is the final part of a three-part interview with Danny Burble. Who he is. Danny is a ambitious man. He started his career, and I do mean career, at age 19. He was a video game programmer. And his whole success has been in doing, as in he's going to get up and he's going to do it, and he's going to do it, and he's going to do it well. And if he fails, he's going to figure out what he did wrong, and he's going to do it even better the next time. And he has built a life for himself where he has been very ambitious and more ambitious and made more money. But he realized in his 20s that if he lost his job, he would lose everything. So instead of losing everything, why not be smarter than that? Why not invest? Didn't know how to invest. So he taught himself. He learned. And he learned how to invest in portfolio, create portfolios, and learn to have the portfolio pay for his lifestyle. So he was able to retire at age 38, which is pretty damn impressive. And then he realized that it kind of sucks, you know, it's boring being retired. Because, you know, your friends are all working at nine to five and they can't play with you. So he created a company called Grow Wealth Within. And that company, he teaches people how to invest and invest smart and small and build it up and up and up and up so that you learn to become a smarter investor and how to diversify the way you invest. And he you know, loves his career. This is a passion for him. And he's sharing this passion with us. So he talks about, and he gives away his secrets to success. He, um, when we talk about confidence, he gives you his four steps to confidence. And in the thriving section, he gives you this very clear model that he has, this mindset that he has, and how to thrive and how to have more of it. And finally, when he goes into three steps, he is, his steps are surprising, but they're very clear and concise, and they're things that are very actionable. So instead of going on about it, why don't you watch the video and let's talk afterwards. All right, see you inside. What does success mean to you? Uh, the short version is I want to be an example for others, mm -hmm. not a warning. Mm. And when you think about that, an, an, an exemplary person, there's so many facets, there's so many contexts in life, and you can honestly never be an example in everything. Yeah. But the idea of, I want to be the kind of guy that I would want to work with, or that I want, would want to go snowboarding with, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I push to be the example. And it doesn't always work, but it, I hold myself to a slightly higher bar and I'm always getting a little closer. Yeah. So for me, success looks like a little better than yesterday. Right on. That's a great example. So you weren't always successful. So uh, how, no. <laughs> how did you get to where you're at today? Uh, a lot of hard work yeah. and uh, in some case just stupid, stubborn, I'm just going to keep going anyways. Yeah. Uh, I mean, when I, went, when I decided I wanted to do video games for a living, I literally had uh, my parents tell me, why don't you get a real job? Um, I literally said, that is stupid. Why don't you get a real job? And I, I just decided it was what I wanted to do. And nothing could hold me back from that. And then it just continued. So when I was, when I was in my first job and I was 19, everyone's way older than me, I realized, okay, well, I'm just going to push harder. I'm going to work harder than these people and get further. Yeah. And so through it all, my, my whole approach has just been uh, just do the work. Yeah. It, it's honestly, it's not that hard. Like time and time again, when you're finished with something, it's always easier than you thought it would be. Right. Persistence. Persistence. Really. Uh, when it comes down to it, it's just uh, you just gotta keep going. Like I, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this. No, that's a perfect way to say it because you're repeating things that many, many a man I've interviewed has already said. Mm. It's, it's a reality. It is. It is, and it's a perfect reality. Because so you were saying persistence. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but basically, I realized at some point that uh, things are always going to go wrong. Yeah. And you all you can really do is prepare for them, um, and then go anyways. And when it goes wrong, just do it better next time. And honestly, that's my secret to success. Yeah. Like my my I've got a couple of things that I do with my journal, which I'll tell you later. Um, but, oh, enough, what? Well, it's one of my, my three steps. Oh, all right, cool. So, um, but ultimately, go try it, mm -hmm. go mess it up, mm -hmm. and then try it again because you're just going to keep getting better. And just be smart enough to, to start small on whatever it is you're trying ah. so that when you mess up, it, you fall down, but it's not that hard. And then you get yourself back up again and you do it again. And before long, 
you're on your way. So you mean don't try and do the entire project, just start at the bottom of the project yeah. and work your way through? Well, for example, mm -hmm. uh, I used to make games. Mm -hmm. So I had plenty of people come to me and say, where do I start? And my answer to them is always, go make Tetris. Just go make Tetris. And you'll discover so many things that you never thought about. It's like, oh, I need to make a high score. I gotta save a high score. Right, you start to just tune into all these little things that are involved with a title screen, menu selection, options, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And Tetris itself turns out to be its own animal, but not so hard compared to all this other stuff you have to put together. Right. But once you've got Tetris, now you can take all that other stuff, pull Tetris out, and put anything else in. Mm -hmm. And so, start small. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's clever. That's really, really clever. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's true though, right? Like you go to a shop class or something like that, they don't make you build a cabinet for the first no, one. No, no. <laughs> build a damn box. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can you make a box? <laughs> I remember making a like a keychain where you're like burning your name into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. That, basic basic stuff. Like barely can you cut a square. <laughs> can yeah. You, yeah. And for some reason, I mean this comes into play a lot in my investing classes. Like yeah. a lot of people they get to the end of their career, mm -hmm. they're sixty, seventy and they have this lump sum of money, and they basically go out there and try to invest it all somehow. Mm. And it's like taking your first swing with a bat ever in, in the World Series. Yeah, It's the dumbest thing you can do compared to putting yourself in a batting cage and knowing that this, the 100 balls are gonna come at you, you get 100 swings and it doesn't even matter if you miss. Yeah. Like that's what you need to do. You need to create situations where you just get to keep failing and learn, but there's no real downside. Then you move up to joining a team. Then you move up to getting to a bigger team and leagues and things like that. Yeah. It would be silly just to start in the World Series. Yeah, totally. So. That's brilliant. Confidence, man. So what is your definition for confidence? What I found with confidence is if you are centered in your values, mm -hmm. right? If, if you have solid values mm -hmm. and you fall back into your values, then confidence just comes out. Because all you're doing is just being yourself. Right? And you, when you're worried about not being yourself, I find that's when, that's when my confidence waves. Or I'm, I'm trying to be someone else or pretend to be this or that. And that's when it's, it just falls apart. For success, understand your values mm -hmm. and stay within those and persevere. Yeah. And mm -hmm. grit. And grit. And grit. What does grit mean? Uh, that's, that's persistence. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. So they've done studies on, I mean, I've, I've been in a lot of classes about entrepreneurs and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And they've done a lot of studies and they, they all show that one of the key ingredients in people who are successful is grit. Mm -hmm. And grit is that ability to just keep getting up and keep going and keep pushing, even though it doesn't seem, to everyone else, it doesn't seem like you're getting anywhere. Yeah. Um, and everyone else is going to tell you to stop. What are you doing? What are you thinking? Yeah. And at some point, you'll get there and they'll say, oh, I knew you'd do it. I believed in you all along. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> thriving. What does thriving mean to you? I think thriving is, I guess, really living your life the best. Mm -hmm. like living your best self and your best life to its fullest. And I think a lot of that comes down to understanding your values and then making sure your actions are in line with them. Like you have to have this alignment with everything that is you, all pushing in the same direction. Otherwise, you're kind of lying to yourself and you're, you're pulling yourself in different directions and your life is not going to thrive. Mm -hmm. So for me, thriving is you know, getting everything out of the work you do. Throwing yourself in the work you do because you love it. Mm -hmm. But also throwing yourself into play because you deserved it, you earned it. Yeah. And so every facet of your personality, turning it up to 110% and... To me, that would be Thrive. Hmm. So you didn't always thrive? No. How did you get here? Uh, I would say the hard way. <laughs> okay. Um, a lot of times people, uh, people joke about you know, the things they've been through. And, and I always say that I graduated from the University of Hard Knocks. Hmm. Um, pretty much the majority of my experience has been getting knocked down. Hmm. Um, so in all honesty, the way I got here was that I just kept getting up. Yeah. yeah. That's the key. <laughs> Seriously, though, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah, you're never going to learn to ride that bike till you fall down that last time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Three steps. If you could give three pieces of advice to a younger version of yourself to do this, do this, do this, don't do this, avoid these things, like, here's the secrets, here's the, the quick crib notes, 
What kind of, kind of advice would you give a younger version of yourself to either succeed or thrive or, you know, be more successful, you know, or to don't date that person? <laughs> you know, going back in time here. So what, what would you tell your younger version of yourself? Uh, it's interesting because I feel like a lot of my success comes through failure. Yeah. And so one of the first things I would tell myself is that everything you want is just outside your comfort zone. Mm. And you have to get uncomfortable to get there which means you're going to fail. Mm. And it's the sooner you realize you're going to fail, but failure means you're heading in the right direction. Mm. If you're afraid of it because you're stepping outside your comfort zone, that means you're heading in the right direction. Mm. So oftentimes the obstacle is the way. Whatever it is that is causing all the grief, the trouble or whatever that you're avoiding, that is the direction you should be going. And so that's, where I, that's the first thing I would tell myself at a younger age is you get out of your comfort zone. That's, yeah, yeah. that's where everything you want lives. Nice. Nice. That's great. That's a great piece of advice, man. That's, that's pretty damn fine. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, in, our, in our group, we call that uh, leading into edge. Oh, nice. Yeah. I like, I like that. Yeah, right? Because it, it is the thing. It's the leading into your comfort zone. Um, I'm, curi uh, I'm curious how you got to that decision, but we'll go How I got to that decision yeah, for... Yeah, for... To go towards the discomfort. Because like, you basically told them, the discomfort, if that's what's happening, that's the direction to move towards. How did you, def how did you figure that out for yourself? Uh, it, at some point, I, I started looking back and realizing that I was making progress mm -hmm. on things that everybody else was afraid of, that I wasn't afraid of. Mm -hmm. um, and then I let other people's like, opinions come in and I started to like, find myself not wanting to do things because of what other people said. That it, oh, it's going to be hard, it's going to be tough, this, that. And uh, I, I kind of started like slowing down mm. in my progress, in expanding myself and going the directions that I wanted to go or whatever. And one day I just hit me like, what am I doing? Like, what, when did I start listening to other people's opinions of my life? And after that, as I just, I started to realize, no, I was always heading in the right direction and I'm just going to get right back to it. Yeah. So I guess I, I was kind of lucky that um, I was a little bit fearless when I was younger, yeah. And so I got to see what progress feels like when you dive into your fears. Yeah. Uh, you know, at 17, I got on a plane to go to Canada, and knowing some guy was gonna pick me up at the airport and be my roommate. Oh wow! And we were supposed to go to the same school, and that was it. Like I, I had a hundred dollars, a hundred dollar check that I had to bring to the bank and convince them to let me cash. Wow. So <laughs> I mean, it, crazy. But at the time, I just everything about it felt right. Like yeah. so. That whole looking back, I realized every time my life moved forward, it was because I just drove straight into that, that edge that you're talking about. Right on. And so, yeah, and now I look for it. Right on. Yeah. So the second piece of advice you give a younger version of yourself. I actually said this earlier, uh, and that's be an example, not a warning. Because it took me a long time to figure that out. Yeah. And the, the, with that, there's so many ways in which you could be an example. And it could be in any situation. Uh, I've had many cases where, I mean, I'm sure this happened to you. You're in a situation, there's a bunch of people, something happens. There's some kind of conflict or something that happens. It doesn't quite involve you, and you did nothing. And you look back later and go, man, I wish I had done something. Mm. Right? That, that was an opportunity, and I let it go slip through my fingers. Yeah. And in cases like that, I feel like I could have been the example in that room. Mm. And I would want to get myself to understand that feeling sooner compared to being the warning compared to being the person who gets nowhere because they're not even getting involved or because they're not considering other people's feelings or there's so many ways you could be that the warning and a good way to think about that uh, or discover that is if you're ever on a team someone on that team is the example and someone on that team is the warning yeah and what are you one of those people mm. so right on that's a good example right on <laughs> that's a really good example so the third piece of advice so the third piece of advice is more of a kind of a to-do item. Mm -hmm. So I discovered this later in life, and I wish I could give it to myself when I was, say, 15. And that is, every day, write down two things that worked, and write down two things that didn't work. Mm -hmm. And then come back, and for every one of those items, write down a way to make it uh, succeed by default. So. How can I set this up for success? Huh. And so what that looks like, for example, is uh, say you're shooting a video. And you know what worked? We stopped and we did a sound check. You say, okay, 
how can I set that up for success every day? Okay, well, I'm going to make a checklist here. I'm going to stick it right next to the camera. From this day forward, I will never have a problem with doing a mic check. It's just going to happen. Yeah. As soon as you take that step forward, now you open yourself up to new things that could go wrong mm -hmm. that you could solve and, and move yourself forward and keep moving yourself forward. On the opposite side of things, if something goes wrong, it's easy to say, okay, well, how can I solve this for good? Mm -hmm. So it always goes right. Right. And honestly, those that right there, stopping and writing down two things worked, two things that didn't work, and how to set them up for success by default is the secret to my success. Hmm. I started doing that when I was 29, 30, and I started doing it at work. Uh, and at work, I would just sit down before the day started. Yeah. Honestly, I'd get there five minutes earlier than everybody else and just do this thing. What worked yesterday? What didn't work yesterday? How could and I would end up doing things on the team that no one else was doing hmm. to move the team forward and solve problems for good forever. Hmm. And what do you know, I just kept rising through the ranks. And then I started to apply it to my non-work life, and that also started to thrive. Mm. So honestly, it is the secret to my success, is taking a moment to identify what works and what doesn't work, and it's always setting it up for success. That is stellar. Oh my gosh, that is, that's gold right there, dude. Dude, that right. was badass. That Thank was. You. Thank that you was so much. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for watching. What'd you think? different, right? I mean, he is not, he's not what you expect. You know, he, he has, he's, he's very analytical. He's got the engineer mind and he breaks things down in little steps. And his whole idea is start small, work your way up. It's impressive stuff. So are you investing? Have you invested? Have you started investing? Have you started working on your retirement? If you have, what are you doing? Leave a comment down below. Have you subscribed? Help us reach 100 subscribers. We're really close, guys. Uh, and, you know, hit the bell for notifications. And by all means, join the Facebook group and join us on the conversation this Sunday with Danny because he's going to be there for the Q&A. All right. See you next week.